Welcome to AI Attic. Today, we're in San Francisco where we're gonna be doing a compare and contrast test with Tesla full self-driving beta and Waymo RoboTaxi to see who the superior king of RoboTaxis is in this wonderful city. Now, if you're unfamiliar, I'm on Vermont Street, which is the curviest road in San Francisco. Yes, curvier than that one you're thinking, Lombard Street. So before we call our Waymo RoboTaxi, let's get into our Tesla and see how this one does on Vermont Street because Tesla does use a vision-based only system that they're trying to brute force for self-driving. However, Waymo is using LiDAR and ultrasonics and many other types of sensors such as radars to handle their self-driving features. So with these different types of self-driving suites, let's see how they compare and contrast again on San Francisco's curviest road. With that, let's begin. What we're gonna do is instantly turn on FSD beta. It is engaged like this bigger. It just ran that stop sign and now it's turning left. Oh gosh, I mean, we had it, we, our navigation was going straight. That was already a bad, see our navigation literally shows us going this way and it tried to turn left there and it ran a stop sign. That's already not a good uh, start here for Tesla. So now we're gonna restart it here and go again. It has to get to that tiny little driveway area gap right here. Let's see how it does. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure now at the beginning, but oh, here we go. Has a good amount of speed coming in here. Hard brakes, but it is doing good at keeping the rims away from the curb, which I do like. I like my rims nice and clean. And it's doing this pretty aggressively, I have to say. The brakes are hitting pretty hard, but like not in a bad way. In a, uh, it's trying to do this in a racy way. This is pretty good. This is pretty impressive so far. I mean, it had that blunder at the very beginning where it ran a stop sign and went left, even though the navigation was going straight. But now that we're on this absolutely incredible windy road that I don't even know how it exists. It's like a road, a tiny cobblestone road in Italy almost. It handled it very, very well. Hard on the brakes there at the stop sign. As a human, I would have accelerated by now but it says it's creeping forward for visibility. I can see that it's clear. There's no traffic from our right, and this is a one way. So I'm not sure why it's hesitating. There is a speed bump up here, and it does not slow down for the speed bump. We just go right over the speed bump. And we've reached a stop sign. We're gonna be turning right here for the navigation. It's taken a good amount of time to get to the stop sign, but it's doing it safely, so I'll give it that. Let's see, where is this taking us? We're going to the public parking at the local hospital over here. There is a Amazon van in the middle of the road, so let's see how it handles this Amazon van. I can't see over this. Okay, this is scary. I can't see over this. I can't see over this. Okay, it is clear, though. <laughs> it, just, it just sent it, even though the, a car could have easily been coming up, creeping up over that hill. But... It, it was okay that time, so we're okay. We now have right away. It's not, it's taking its time. This Toyota's waving at us. They're getting annoyed. There's tons to go. We have gone. There's this actor coming into our lane a little bit. And the Tesla gets to the right, but way too late. I would have liked it if it went to the right maybe a couple more seconds earlier than not right when the car was next to us. We have the right away. We can go. And it's taking its time. It's going 16 and a 25. Maybe it's because of this person right here that was in the middle of the road. That was probably on its radar. So it's stopping way too early for this. There's, there are pedestrians, though, that stop probably has something to do with it. I'm going to hit the accelerator. And it's I'm, I'm off the accelerator, by the way. I'm not on it. And it's, it's, it's not, it's, I'm going to have to, I'm hitting the accelerator. It does, didn't want to pull in, but here we are. We did pull in. Finally, we arrived after I had to force it with the accelerator to pull into this parking lot. Makes me uncomfortable because they've been making the software since 2016. Um, and they've been having FSD beta out for at least four or five years now. And it doesn't make me feel like it's going to get any better if after all these years, it's still failing to do very basic and menial tasks that an average daily Uber driver would do. And yet I'm in the driver's seat assisting it, which is something that means we're far away from Robotax level four. 
Now it comes time for us to order the Waymo to try the exact same test here on Vermont Street. But while we were sitting here, we did notice there's a lot of families and kids here because there is a park right at the top of this windy Vermont road. In fact, right after we did the test with the Tesla, we actually saw a family with kids walking up and down that curvy road, which could have made that a lot more dangerous. So that's why we have to strive to make sure that these self-driving cars are as safe as they can be. So with that, let's order our Waymo One and see how that compares to the Tesla on the same exact test. All right, so now it's asking us where our location is going to be. Let's just drop it right there. Yes, Zuckerberg Z San Francisco General Hospital. That's our drop off, and our pickup is going to be yeah. Let's just yeah, let's make it McKinney Square. We're going to do Apple Pay. Request cards can be ten dollars ninety eight cents to go just a couple blocks, which is actually kind of a lot of money. But that's fine. We're doing this for you, you viewers at home. So I'm going to process that, and it says it'll see me in four minutes. So let's see what happens in four minutes when the car arrives. All right, here is the Waymo. It's arriving for our pickup, and here's the car. So let's go ahead and get inside of it, shall we? Oh, it's kind of pulling away from me. I think it's trying to find a safe place to pull over, which I respect. What? All right, well, there it goes. Now we're not in it, it's leaving without us, but we can film it going down that, I guess. Oh, wait, hold on. Nope, now it says ready for pickup. So both systems have a little bit of blunders, but so far, it's allowing us to get in it, so that's good. The Splendor got fixed. So I'm gonna go in the app and click unlock. And the cars have unlocked and they present themselves the doors. Let's go ahead and get this camera mounted. As soon as I got in, it's welcomed me. It said, good to see you, John. So I'm gonna let you guys get in the back seat. I'm gonna go ahead and get in the front. All right, guys, so now I'm in the Waymo car. It's asking me to start, so I'm gonna hit start right here on the front of the screen. Hello from Waymo. We and we are starting. So as you can see, there is no one in the driver's seat whatsoever. The wheel is just doing its thing. There's pedestrians as you see over there. And it's handling this very good, it's very smooth. Something we should probably point out however, is the Waymo started our journey without requiring our cameraman Phil to wear a seatbelt in the back. Only after about 20 seconds into the ride did Waymo alert us via the screen and audible chimes to buckle up, as you can see in here now. The car continued as Phil quickly buckled up. Now with that mentioned, let's get back to the robo taxi ride. As I was saying, it's very smooth. It's going without braking hard, without accelerating hard, and it's just smoothly going down here, maintaining a solid six miles an hour the entire way without changing the speed really. Just keeping a good distance from all the curbs. And it just keeps talking to me, as you can hear in the background. We're getting here around the Honda. Again, it's very smooth. And here's the stop sign where the Tesla did have some issues. Um, it stopped here and said it needed uh, time to see what was around here. The Waymo does a much better job. It just goes right, right through that stop sign, doing a normal pace that a normal human would do. And now we are going to hit a, uh, a speed bump. As I'll flip the camera around, you can see that there is a speed bump right here. My camera's not flipping, but it handles it, slows down for it. Very smooth, very nice. Very comforting, I have to say. This is a very nice car. Very quiet, very comfortable. A very different contrast from the Tesla. Whereas the Tesla, when I'm driving in it, I'm constantly thinking, oh, it's gonna make a mistake. What do I need to pay attention to? What mistakes do I need to correct for? And your heart rate really does go up a lot when you do drive that Tesla on FSD beta, which is one of the main reasons I tend to not to utilize it that much. Now right here with the Waymo, it's very calm. You can see that I'm very relaxed. There's cars all around us and I feel very comfortable in here. I feel very safe. I mean, it's just going right here. That Toyota last time was rushing us with their hands saying, hey, go. But the Waymo did a wonderful, wonderful job of just going right through that stop sign as any human would do in a respectable amount of time. It says we're arriving in two minutes and we're almost there. I do have to say, I think uh, Waymo and Google definitely beat Elon to the robo taxi. I don't see a Tesla ever being this comfortable unless version 12 proves me wrong. It's doing a really good job. There's a pedestrian right here. You can see on the screen, it's doing little circles. I'll try and flip this around for you. It shows little circles right here on the screen of where all the people are, which I think is really, really nifty. And it says we're arriving in two minutes. There's pedestrians right here, so it looks like it is going to wait for these pedestrians before we do go into this area. But it's been assertive too. It's still moving while it's seeing the pedestrians, which makes me think that it's confident enough to know what to do around them. Whereas the Tesla, even without the pedestrians right there, it refused to 
even go in the parking lot, we had to hit the accelerator to say, hey, yes, you can go up this lift. This is a parking lot. And we had to force it into here in the Waymo, even with the pedestrians. Did a wonderful, wonderful job. Hey guys, Future John here. As we saw, both Tesla FSD and Waymo got us to our destination safely in a respectable amount of time. In conclusion though, I'm gonna have to give the Waymo a 4.5 star out of five, whereas I'm gonna have to give the Tesla two stars out of five. The reason for this is that at the very beginning of the Tesla drive, it did run a stop sign, try to deviate from the navigation path. It hit the brakes a lot during the windier path, which made it uncomfortable because it tried to race down it. And on top of that, it didn't yield to a blind hill going around an Amazon vehicle. We had a Toyota driver wave at us saying, hey, go, because we took too long to stop sign and it failed to pull into the Mark Zuckerberg Hospital parking lot. Whereas the Waymo, yes, it had a blunder at the very beginning due to the drop-off pin being the top of the hill, and it actually made us walk half a block to get in the vehicle because it couldn't find a safe place to let us in. However, once we got in the vehicle and the ride started, it was evident to us right away that the Waymo was a much smoother, elegant, and enjoyable ride compared to the Tesla. I felt way safer in the Waymo, whereas the Tesla, I'm always trying to figure out what's gonna do wrong so that way I can be one step ahead of it. So therefore, I'm giving Tesla two stars and Waymo five. If you enjoyed this content, do feel free to like and subscribe. And if you wanna see future Waymo versus Tesla content, do feel free to let us know down below what you wanna see. With that, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Goodbye.